Hello everybody, it's Blair and I am back for part two of how to use your microscope part one. Now today I'm going to cover the whole reason you bought the microscope in the first place and that is making slides. This is if you've already made some slides, you might be thinking, I already have this figured out. Making slides isn't that hard. It's not hard at all, actually. But there's some little technique things you might want to perfect. And if you're just starting out with your microscope, this should be really helpful. There are three parts to today's talk. The first one I'm going to talk about is the stuff you're going to want, the slide materials that you're going to want. Uh, and I've got some tips for some of the things you might want to choose. Part two, I'm just going to talk about, once again, I'm going to talk about how to set up your microscope. And I have everything in front of me. So you're actually going to see me viewing it. And then part three, I'm going to make some slides. I will be, we'll be looking at a feather. We will be looking at stained and unstained corn. Those are going to be dry mount slides, and we'll be looking at some wet mount slides, and we're going to look at one prepared slide. And I will be giving you tips and my thoughts all along the way. So let's get started. The first thing, sorry, I'm moving over to another camera. Okay, there we go. No, I did not have that set up very well, do I? Okay. Uh, all right. Okay, stop playing around with it, Blair. Everything is backward. Okay, this is my cutting mat. Now, I like this. It's a cutting board. It's actually a mat, which is why I said cutting mat. It's not really a board. I like this. It's purple. Things really show up on it, uh, and which is important. And it's fairly smooth. The reason I like that is because sometimes I scrape with my exacto knives when i scrape with my exacto knives it's nice not to get plastic it's nice to have something smooth so i don't also get cutting board now this is a very 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 fancy exacto knife and it's way overkill i don't really even use a lot of these the uh most of these blades are completely unused but i got it a, a, it was on sale for ten dollars so i was like oh yeah okay i'll buy that very fancy uh, so you'll see me today. You will, oh, I was practicing and I didn't clean that blade. You want a clean blade. So I'm going to, bad technique, we'll put that one aside because you really want a clean blade. So this one, these all have clean blades and I will be showing you more on my X-Acto knife. You don't have to have an X-Acto knife. You can use a knife that you've got just sitting in your drawer. That is fine. The, um, the bottom line is it the the sharper it is, the better the slice, the thinner the slice. However, if you uh, might cut yourself, don't use an X-Acto knife. Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to, I am sorry, everyone. I think this will be better if I just hold things up for the camera so that you don't have these long pauses where you're looking at a purple mat. Okay, toothpicks. 50% off. Do you see I left things on sale? <laughs> now you know something about me. Toothpicks. Toothpicks are really important because they allow you to, without your hands, play around with the specimen once you get it on your slide. So I actually use toothpicks a lot and they you can use a toothpick to pull. When you get a little teeny slice, you can use a toothpick to pull away. Slides. I am super picky about slides. Buy slides that are glass. Do not use plastic slides. You can get inexpensive plastic slides. The reason for getting not using plastic slides is plastic scratches way easier than glass does. So if you're going to clean your slides, and over the years I have cleaned many, many slides, if you're going to clean your slides ever, you do not want slides that scratch. I actually think that even in an unscratched plastic slide, that you get a better view through a glass slide. And when you're looking at microscopic samples, it matters. It's not a huge price difference between plastic and glass slides. And that goes for prepared slides too. I will only buy prepared slides if they are made with glass slides. Okay, slide covers. Uh, do you think I'm using plastic slide covers? The answer is N-O. <laughs> N-O. 
No plastic slide covers. These are glass twin. They are super thin. One of the easiest ways to not have a clear view is to not realize that your slide cover is um, that you've got two when you grab them. And you'll see me fumble around with these today. Then we've got stain. This is methylene blue and this is iodine. When I first wrote biology two and had all those microscope labs, I investigated stain and there are many different kinds of stains besides these two. It's really interesting how I have to turn these so you can see that it's the opposite of the way my brain's telling me to. So these are the only two you'll really need for most uses. The One of the things that I do see sometimes are is that instead of iodine, that people will have a red dye. I have no idea what red dye is made of, but if red dye is not made of iodine, you don't want it. Go get red food coloring. Yes, will it stain some things? Yes, but I, but but the iodine stain and the methylene blue stain very specific parts of microscopic organisms. This methylene blue is used to stain the acidic parts of cells. And you will see a cheek cell of mine where I have stained by the nucleus. You got, if I can key in on the nucleus I was looking at yesterday, you'll be able to get a really good view of a nucleus of one of my cells. And iodine stains carbohydrate molecules like starch. So this is actually great when you're looking for um, starch molecules in plant cells. And then you will want, sorry, you'll want specimens. I have leaf, I have a feather, I have corn, I'm gonna have lots of starch in it. Then I've got a couple other slides. I'm gonna show you how to make these, but then I made them yesterday just to make it easier. And sometimes you will have prepared slides. Now, I know a lot of people when they buy a microscope will buy a box of prepared slides. And that's great. I have one myself and it's not up here. But if you're a microscope is a piece of equipment, just like if you were going to do a construction project and you wanted to use a drill, the more you use that drill, the better you would become at using it. The more slides you make, the better you're going to become making slides. And so it's actually you learning how to use this piece of equipment to for all parts. And so I really think that making slides is an important part of owning a microscope, certainly an important part of any biology class that has microscopy as a part of it. However, the, you, you're never going to make as thin a slice as you can get with a prepared slide. These are made by machines, make the thin, thin slices. And so one of the site, what we're going to look at today, we'll look at cell division, one of the steps in cell division, and we'll be able to see a really beautiful picture of the chromosomes pulling apart. And so you're not going to get that with, <laughs> I have tried many times, and if you've been successful, you make thinner slices than I do. <laughs> All righty. And then mounting medium. Most of the time, the mounting medium is water. And the prepared slides, I don't think it's water. I think it's something else. But the mounting medium is simply the, um, it's got some beneficial properties as far as the view, as far as the way light moves through it. But the mounting medium sticks the um, slide cover to the slide. And then pipettes. You are going to want pipettes. You're going to want pipettes in the case of, this container, I need pipettes it's to pipette the, um, uh, I need a pipette to get the iodine on it, and a pipette for the water. Now, I forgot paper towels. I cannot believe it. I was practicing yesterday. I went out of the recycling, or the trash, I guess. Uh, you're going to want a paper towel to get any extra liquid Gloves, if you're working with live samples that didn't come from like your the yogurt in your refrigerator. So, for example, if I were to go down to the pond in the park near where I live, I would have gloves on. I do not know what is in that water. 
and I would, because you're handling it uh, and you don't rush right in to wash your hands right away, use gloves. <laughs> there's little things in there. You know, in, in the case of the pond near where I live, there's turtles, ducks, fish, and they're all pooping in there. Use gloves. And then this a nice t-shirt I once loved, loved so much that I wore it out. So now I use it to clean microscope slides. Uh, and the reason I use it, it's soft and it's absorbent. I could spend money on these expensive wipes, but why when there's a t-shirt that I was going to, that had holes in it. <laughs> All right, let's go to part two. Part two. Those are the supplies that you will need, except I left out very important supply, microscope. Okay, what do you notice? What objective lens do I have pointing at my stage? Oh, do you like my? Okay, we're going to ignore this though, because uh, I love my chair. We have the shortest, the 40 times pointing at the stage, and the stage is as far down. I've lowered it. I've gotten it as far away from the objective lens as possible. That maximizes the amount of, of room I have when I am putting slides on and taking slides off. This is just good microscope procedure. The other thing that I wanted to show you was the uh, lens, which I actually took out. I, I went through this yesterday. I cannot believe I forgot. Okay, this is how my microscope looks as a binocular microscope. Okay, but I want to add the camera, so I'm going to turn this into for the for the um, purpose of today, because I want to be able to show you the view. I am going to take this out and I am going to put my camera in. Now I know I told you that the five megapixel. I would show you with a five megapixel lens and a 15, 18 megapixel lens. You're not going to see the five megapixel lens because. I couldn't get it working. So I was really glad that I did practice this. Uh, okay. All right, let me plug that in. Make sure everything is on. There we go. Okay. Uh, sorry. <laughs> There's a lot of pieces. Now you can see why I practiced it all. All right, let's go to making slides. That is getting our microscope. So that microscope is now ready. Slides. Okay. The first slide is a dry mount slide. This is really very, very simple, except I lost the feather. It's just a feather sitting on a slide. Now, there's a reason that I have my feather sitting on a slide. I plucked this, okay. I plucked this feather out of a spider's web and I didn't want any spider web debris on my slide. I'm gonna just put this on my microscope, okay? So let me screen share. Feathers are actually really cool to look at. So it's kind of, uh, Funny. So I went out to, okay, I need to find the screen share. Sorry, everyone. Uh, I went out to the outside my front door and there was a spider web and I thought that the spider web was, didn't have a spider living in it. And window, swift imaging, but it did. So, because I was going to see if I could get an insect. Uh, I could not get an insect because the, um, uh, I'm gonna, while I talk to you, I'm going to raise the stage so that we can begin to see this feather. Uh, because a spider came out from behind uh, something, a little teeny bundle, and it's probably saying to me, hey, what are you doing? You 
person, leave my spider web alone. So, but I did pluck a feather because I did not think the spider would care. Ah, now I want you to, we're looking at dinosaur scales right here, dinosaur feathers, of course, because they didn't go extinct. For those of you, I think almost all kids know that these days and adults, dinosaurs did not go extinct. They're the non-avian dinosaurs went extinct. Avian dinosaurs did not go extinct. Let me reword that. Okay. You see, we are, look at this. Now, one of the things that you can see with the microscope that I, and I am I screen sharing? I am not screen sharing. I don't, I hope, well, hopefully I'm stream. No, I'm not screen sharing. Um, I cannot tell if I'm screen sharing. So if, 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 short, if you can tell me if I'm screen sharing, I'd really love that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now I am screen sharing. Do not know what happened before. Um, one of the things that I really love when you, so when you look at a feather, you don't realize, look at the way the little teeny parts of the feather uh, weave together. Isn't this amazing? Now, this is with the four times. So you might think, why um, are you ever going to use the 40 times, four times 10? The answer is yes. And you things like feathers, uh, you've got to be really careful. Uh, one of the, when you, now I've gone to a hundred times, you have to be really careful when you are doing a dry mount slide where you don't have a slide cover on top. Uh, because you don't want your lens to touch it. I want to go all the way out to the end. I wanted to show you something I found. Play around with the lights. We get a better idea of the edges. One of the things that I find really fascinating is to look at things like feathers. Oh, look at these little teeny what look like hooks out there. It is to look at things like feathers and insect feet with my microscope. I find that fascinating because it looks so cool on the edges. The insect feet are absolutely fantastically fascinating as are their faces, their heads. Okay. All right. I will let me go back to the slide. I think I'm not sure how to go back and forth. Okay. <laughs> So it's going to, okay, first I need to get my microscope all the way, the way it's supposed to be. It'd be really bad if I started using bad technique with all of you. All right, let me get another sample. Okay, now we're going to make another dry mount slide. This time I want to show you with some stain and without stain, why you might want to stain your slides. This is actually a really good example. Uh, and again, it is a dry mount slide. So a dry mount slide has no mounting medium and it doesn't have a slide cover on it. We are going to cut this corn in half. So I want to look at the inside. I don't want to look at the outside kernel. The inside is going to have starch molecules, which makes Iodine. Perfect. You're going to see a chemical reaction called the starch reaction. And in the presence of iodine, starch molecules turn dark blue or black. This is something that uh, you uh, work with in our Real Science Odyssey Biology too. Okay, I'm getting some of the excess off. I'm actually going to, uh, sorry, this is, I'm not doing a very good job of showing you what I'm doing, am I? Okay, I want to get some of the excess off. I just ran a little water over it. This is usually end up, okay. 
All right, so I cut it in two, put a drip of iodine on it, it turned black. Now we're going to look at, I'm going to screen share. Okay, oh, I figured it out. Now we are using the camera view. And I need to increase the amount of light going through. We're looking at a corn kernel. It's, it's hard to see anything in there, isn't it? I can't even tell 100% if it's, ooh, it looks like I'm focused. Okay, now I'm a little nervous to, so I very slowly put the, a hundred times objective lens on there because, and I was really careful because I do not want the corn touching my lens. Reason to go to 100 times. So you can't see much. That's the whole point of that. I'm not going to spend a lot of time. You're probably thinking, uh, I'm not seeing anything Blair. Let's look at it with the iodine stain. I've the, Now this might, oh, it looks right now like you're not going to see much. But in this case, it's not because there's not much to see. There's because it's not focused. Okay. Let us get... Now... I cannot, it wouldn't make sense to put a, to use mounting medium and a slide cover for this. Why? Because I didn't get a thin slice. So what it, what we're seeing here, and we're never going to get, you, do you see this right up here? I hope you can see the arrow at about two o'clock. Let's look at this through the hundred times magnification and see if we can see the, get a better view of those big starch molecules. So do you see how as I move through the uh, focus with the focus knobs, it's changing from blurry to uh, not blurry? That is because I don't have a thin slice. That's because this is textured. And so anytime you don't have a thin slice, that's what happened. You can get a view on one level, but you're not going to get a good view. So you can um, focus in on one level, but you can't focus in on too many, on, on all, all, the entire picture. Now, remember when I talked about field of view last time? Now, I want you to look right now at what you're at, at the field of view where we're at 100 times. Now, at you're still seeing that at 400 times, and you'll really see this with the prepared slide. But now you're looking at a more area of the corn, more of the corn. So let's, done with corn, let's go back and make another slide. Getting this ready. So I'm setting a good example. <laughs> All right. Let me clean this. Don't know again. Uh, now it's not switching. Um, I think I need some uh, exit full screen. Okay, but now I'm not screen sharing. <laughs> I'm really sorry, everyone. I need to share my screen window so that I've got both up when I go to the next one. Yes. Um, okay. But I want to be sharing this. This is... Okay. Well, I can't do it now. Okay. Making the next slide, if either uh, Charlene or... If either of you can help me get the cutting board up, Charlene, or 
Nicole, I appreciate that. Okay. It's really doesn't, I can't figure out how it works on my end. All right, let's look at a leaf. This is where we are going to want to make sure that this is clean. I'm going to take my, I'm going to dip this in water. I'm actually cleaning my X-Acto knife because I used it to make a slice of corn. Uh, and going to, so I went outside that really the, when you're looking at making slices of leaves are great to make a slice with. You want, see how this is sort of a um, sturdy leaf. This is gonna be easier to make a slice from than for example, spinach. Now you might think I'm going to sh try to shave and that's actually what I'm gonna do. Try to shave a big piece. I'm gonna try to shave a really little piece. This is, and I learned yesterday that this really got in my way. So I'm going to try to, and this is, looks, uh, if you're thinking that it looks challenging to do, so I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to shave a little piece. How big does this piece need to be? Not very big. What we're going for is not uh, that this is a, okay, there we go. We're looking for thin. I want just the top of this. Okay. And you're probably thinking, you can't even see what I just got off of here. And I can barely see it. So I'm sure you can barely see it. I am going to slide this. And then I'm going to put, this is going to be a wet mount slide. Now I'm going to put one, two. The, I am not going to stain this. Because of the chloroplast, the things that make the leaf green, I do not need to stain this. I am going to make sure I've got this. Now this is something I want to show you. I am going to come at it from an angle and then I'm going to drop it down. The goal is to make a slide without getting air bubbles. Now, if you're looking at this with me, you can see it doesn't look, it's hard to see what's in there. Looks like something might be in there. We're going to focus in. Now I'm going to Okay, move, ah, yay. Do not know why, sometimes it works really easily and sometimes it doesn't. Okay. Ah. Less light. You might be wondering why it's yellow, and it's yellow because I'm looking at it through the camera. When I look at it through my monocular lens, which if you could see me, you'd see I'm doing right now, it looks very green. Ah, there it is. Ah, uh, there we go. Okay. Do you see all the way over here, this really thin area? I'm going to center this on that. I am going to likely get the best views there because that's where I managed to make the thinnest slice. And so that's... Plant cells are really a great 
uh, plants are really a great thing to look at when you're just starting with a microscope because they have cell walls. And so the cell walls, uh, give you a really clear view of how the cells group together to make a multicellular organism. Oh, look at that. Isn't that nice? See all these, this is at a hundred times magnification. Let us, and the view, uh, you're looking at it on a camera. It was really great that I have a camera you can see it on. The view is much better through the eyepiece. So do not ignore the eyepiece. Okay, now we're gonna to go to 400 times. What's gonna happen when we go to 400 times? We're going to see a smaller area. Yesterday I saw some really, now I'm gonna go in search of, I'm gonna to go to, when you're searching for something, you are going to want the larger magnifications. In fact, like if I have pond water, uh, which I do not have today, if I have pond water, and the reason I don't have it is that when I went down to collect it, they had been spraying, I was very sorry to see they sprayed for mosquitoes. Um, and I didn't know if there was pesticides in the water, so. Uh, in addition to biology, I'm a chemist. I'm like, yeah, I don't think so. So, uh, and that's something for you to think about. Oh, okay. Now, do you see this structure, right? It's not quite in the center. I want to see what that is. Did I manage to capture a stomata? The, did I manage to capture the opening that is in plant leaves that allows carbon dioxide into the plant and oxygen out? Okay, I need to refocus this. So if you're looking at live samples, you want a, you'll go to catch movement using the, ah, I think I did, isn't that, and look at that. Cool, do you see it's kind of got a starred effect coming from the stomata? See the opening right there? Let me see. Now again, looks way, way, way better, way clearer. Um, it's easy, way easier to make the, out that this is a stomata through the eyepiece, but it still looks kind of cool. Okay, let's get this ready for the next slide. We only have a couple left. Uh, again, another wet mount slide. Oh, okay. Went over. Hopefully that was one of you anticipating it. Now I have this, I have one of these slides already prepared. Uh, so let's go. So I am going to make, I'm not going to show you this unstained because it's, there's no reason to. If you're going to look at cheek cells, stain them. Okay. Oops. That is my advice to you. Okay, I'm trying to do too many things. I have no idea why I just did what I did. All right, we are going to, how do you get cheek cells? Uh, uh. Can we just say I function better when there's not? <laughs> now you know when there's not like, Five different things I have to pay attention to. Okay, cheek cells. Where are you going to get cheek cells? Are you going to take a toothpick and you're going to go, uh oh, right there. It's really a good idea if you have cleaned and brushed your teeth, which I did. Now you're going to roll this around. You know, one of the things that you should get out of this is when you are using a microscope, go out, find feathers. Pick a leaf off a tree. See what your cells look like. Hey, I'm looking at cheek cells, but what if I got cells that were from my outer layer of my skin, 
Would they look like my cheek cells? Hmm, well, you don't have hair in your mouth, hint, hint. Ooh, what would this, if your teeth weren't brushed, could you see something cool? Hopefully not moving, but probably if you caught some bacteria in there. What about under your fingernails? Ooh, but still kind of cool looking at it under the microscope. <laughs> so it's hard to see where that sample is for my cheek. So you're gonna, I like to pay attention to that. Now we're gonna do a wet mount slide. I'm gonna switch my view. Switch to down here. Okay, all right, oh good. It's on the right thing this time. One, two, usually does it. I am not going to be able to make this slide just so you know without blue fingers. Okay, because, so now I'm going to do this. Now you want to make sure you get enough water. Too much it happens all the time, especially when you're first starting. But you really want to make sure you get enough water. Because if you don't, you definitely get more air bubbles. Now this is the messiest part of making stained slides. I am going to put a drip right here and through capillary action it is going to go, but I don't want all that blue. If I were to look at this right now, what do you think we would see? Well, it would look incredibly blue. That is for sure, it is sliding. Now I am going to draw, try drawing. I'm going to try to create movement of water by absorbing it with a paper towel. This is why I was kind of bummed that I didn't have my paper towel. For this, a t-shirt does not work as well. well. What am I going to do with all that blue? Well, I am going to flush it out. I want to make sure that it that the stain got everywhere. Okay. And when you know, just because I'm on camera, usually this part isn't. <laughs> okay. We're going to flush the stain in that direction. Okay. Um, mm, so what am I doing? Now I'm running, ah, good. Now I'm running water through this, okay? The cells that were in there, they are stained already. And that I did not want to do. It's not, don't worry about it, but, but if when I won't go to, if I were to use this slide, when I went to 400 times, I'd have to be very, very careful because I got water on the top of this slide, on the slide cover. And I can see it. I might, I would, I would probably let this slide sit for a bit, which is why I have a prepared slide from this morning. Okay, we're gonna let this sit. So I want it to look, I want this to look like this. Now you can't see it uh, probably because of the purple, but I can, you can see little teeny blue speckles in there. That is what you want. It is, um, be, and those speckles, they're my cells. Okay, let us go and look at this. Uh, if we could change, uh, perfect. Whoever's doing that for me, I am so grateful. So is the audience. Okay, now you have to go and look for yourselves. Uh, I'm going to, I actually am going to look through my monocular lens to and go and search. Now, I am at 40 times magnification, but remember what I told you, this is where you go and look for things. Let me see if I can find a good, oh, I see a good cell right up there. And by good, I mean, I can see some organelles around it because that's what we want. We want to look, like I said, you'll get some debris. Uh, okay. Uh, now let me focus in for this. Oh, 
Okay, let us go, because we're looking at cheek cells. So we're going to, it just looks like a bunch of junk on this screen. Not very impressive. Okay, this is a stained cell right there's right hopefully you can see it sort of let me let me center it because we're going to want to look at that under 400 times again it's also easier to move this um so there's this is stain this is cheek cells too. I probably, that's probably just a roll of cheek cells. This is going to be, or cellular material. So what I was looking for was a cell that looked like I'd gotten it pretty flat. Ah, uh, look at that. That is a nicely stained cell but all right now let's look at a prepared slide i just want to and then we're on to questions prepared slide these if you're going to buy prepared slides, I have a bunch of prepared slides. I have prepared slides that show a lot of different things, but don't really do a much better job than my own stained slides. What we're going to see with this, again, I've got it on the lowest magnification. What we're going to see with this is really, is it a very nicely, a machine sliced slide you will, with that, you will be able to see uh, cellular processes. So again, this is cell division. Let me get all the way out to the tip. I might be going in the wrong direction. Nope. I guess if I were going doing this for like TV, I'd have to have like 10 microscopes set up. So this is a really streamlined process on all of them. Okay. Instead, you're watching me. Okay. We are looking at the tip. I want you, if you've never thought about it, I want you to give some thought to why is cell division happening at the roots or the tips of the roots. That's a great place to look for it. You're probably thinking, oh, I know the answer to this, or or in an onion, it can be the parts that are growing. It has to be things that are growing because that's where you're gonna, you're most likely to catch cells that are dividing where you know there's growth. All right. Let us that is, you can see all those. It's a stained slide, lots of I'm gonna let through a little more light. Lots of cells. Let's see if we can focus down on some of these. Ah, okay. Ah, now I, from here, I'm looking for where I think there is some spreading and I'm looking right here. Something is going on right there. So I am going to center that before we go to 400 times. So one of the things that you've seen is you, oh, I'm going right up here. One of the things that you have seen is different when different magnifications are important. So for the feather, we didn't use 400 times magnification. 40 times magnification was actually pretty good. For this cellular process, 40 times only really, really wasn't that useful. We needed, it's 400 times when we'll start to see something so cool. <laughs> All right, you are looking inside of the cells of this plant. And when 
cells divide, they replicate their genetic material and then the genetic material splits apart so that it Um, well-made slide. Okay, stop sharing. Okay. Have I been muted for like seriously minutes? My camera with sound was not connected. Okay, that is the end. Does anyone have any questions? <laughs> Great. Um, I'm really sorry, everyone. Anyone who knows me knows I was talking the whole time. And when I got back, somehow when we went to streaming, my voice wasn't. Uh... <sighs> okay. Charlene and Nadine, do we have any? I'm not needing. My voice was there the whole time. <laughs> that really stressed me out. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>